All righty then. Okay, let's see if we can get the, get this get this together here. <clears throat> Shout out to all those uh, in YouTube land. Welcome to this spontaneous broadcast of what we call the Reality Temple on Earth. I don't want to keep you long. Shout out to Twin Pyramid on Angel Snub Nub Seven. YouTube channel. We are simulcasting on uh, Angel Snub Nub 7 YouTube channel. Also, our internet ministry Facebook channel. Also, right here on Reality's Temple on Earth internet ministry uh, YouTube channel. <clears throat> I'm doing an experiment. I changed my router. And I decided to try to use the green screen again. It really don't look all that hot. I don't think I'm going to use the green screen. But we're going to see if we have technical difficulties. I don't want to hold you long. I just want to ask, ask uh, give an opinion. Ask a question. Give my opinion. Uh, answer. That's what I want to do. <clears throat> now... At one time, I was I was a younger person. <laughs> At one time, I was a younger person. I grew up in the 1970s. And I was given as a Christmas gift this book here. I don't know if you can see that. An, in, an encyclopedia collection, four books about black history. Now, this is the 1970s. I've had this book since I was a little boy. <laughs> so, this is all, since, since at least 19, what, well, the early 70s, 1972, three, something like that. Maybe 74. I think it was 74, something like that. I've had this book since I was, I guess, nine or 10 years old. Given this book as a Christmas gift. Hope you can see that. Ebony Magazine, Pictorial History of Black America. Pictorial History of Black America. Now, in this book, it starts off, guess what? This is the pictorial history of Black America. It starts off with, it does not start off, now this is the 70s, it does not start off with slavery. It starts off, let me show you. It starts off with ancient Egypt, Africa. That's how it starts off. The pictorial history of black America. Now look. <clears throat> I want to give my commentary. We don't get out of here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend hours. We're just gonna do 45 minutes. I, I I guarantee you. We're just gonna talk about this less than an hour and get on out of here. What brings me to this topic is I've been on a binge. I've been on a binge on YouTube. I've been a bit on a binge on Instagram. A binge on what? I've been on a binge on black history. We're going to talk about that. But our history, according to Ebony Magazine, begins with ancient Egypt. Now, when you first come off 
or our ancestors first came off the slave plantation. And when we were taught that black people never accomplished nothing, that we were running around in the jungle, uncivilized, swinging from tree to tree, half naked, we didn't do nothing in the world. And this is what we was taught for hundreds of years. We're nothing. So when we learn, because they put, they put all of us in the same category with dark skin, melanated skin. So it was a wonderful thing to discover that Ancient Egypt was black. And they accomplished so much, had this high civilization. It was a wonderful thing to discover that African people, while the Europeans were in the so called, well, were in the, it ain't so called, they called it the Dark Ages, Africa was thriving. Not only Egypt, but many places on the continent, these was black people. And so since they was all, all black people, that means we related. So for us coming off the slave plantation, only knowing slavery, this was joyous. This is wonderful. And it became part of black history because we were told we were Africans kidnapped and brought here. So these are our relatives. We were kings and queens in Africa. We were doing hella good in Africa. This is wonderful for a slave coming off the plantation. Well, Lakeham Salam, Lunch Break Chronicles, Lakeham Salam. This was a wonderful thing. And then as I was growing up, I learned even more because I was introduced to the teachings, Lunch Break Chronicles, uh, Lunch Break Chronicles, Lunch Break Chronicles. When I was a young boy, I was introduced to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he taught me that our history goes back 76 trillion years. And we were gods. So for people that come off the slave plantation, this was wonderful news. Wow, I'm a god. Not only was I kings and queens in Africa, hell, I'm a, a god. And when you're on that level and when you suffer from low self-esteem, you needed this. How you doing, Yanga? You needed this. This is wonderful news. Incredible. Who wouldn't love, who wouldn't love to be told I'm God? I'm a king and I was a ruler. Who wouldn't want that? I mean, it sounds good. And so as a struggling people off the slave plantation, these type of teachings is wonderful for the self-esteem of people who say they're nothing. You're nothing. Well, now comes the bad part. <laughs> Here comes the bad part. So I, I know you started off so good. <laughs> you started off so well. Well, here comes the bad part. You do that to a person when they're down, when you're trying to uplift them. Like a young man that really don't know how to play basketball that well. He will never make the NBA. But you tell him, you know something? Keep, keep practicing. 
you're going to make the NBA. He'll never make the NBA. But you want to build that self-esteem. You don't want to destroy that 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 feeling that 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 euphoria that somebody get when they uh, start to believe in themselves. I'm not a slave. I'm a god. I'm a king. I'm a queen. I'm a goddess. I'm a woo. And in our infancy, these things coming to us off the slave plantation and they really start taking off around the 1920s and the 30s. We in our infancy, we needed that push. And of course, we're not Europeans. We must be related to these people some kind of way. Brother, you was doing so good. That's, that's you, right? Keep, keep, keep going. That's, that's, I, I cannot do that. I cannot do that and be honest with you. I cannot do that. The problem here is we're no longer infants anymore. And you know you couldn't play basketball. But as you mature, you begin to find your other talents and you, and you go on and do what you can really do. You know you can't play basketball. Don't tell me I can play basketball because I know I can. As you grow older, older and you begin to understand that's not that's not your calling. That's not who you are. You're not a basketball player. We are not of Kemet. Where's my book? The Black the The Victorian History of Black America begins in ancient Egypt. I read this. Besides Egyptians having dark skin, it does not say how we are Egyptians. I've listened to Dr. Henry Clark, a wonderful scholar, but he never, I've never heard him explain how did we go from Egyptians to a slave on a plantation in America, because even, even under that history, and correct me, because I, I can be in error, we supposed to come from West Africa. By the time the slave trade began, they wasn't taking nobody from, Egypt was destroyed, right? The, Egypt was destroyed. And they wasn't taking any slaves from that part of the region anyway. Correct me, Yanga. We are supposed to be the descendants of Africans from West Africa. Egypt is not mentioned. I read this book by the scholars, people more who have studied these things, but they don't explain how did somebody from ancient Egypt become a slave in America. How did that happen when the slaves came from West Africa? They didn't take slaves from West Africa. If I'm incorrect, please correct me because I'm I don't I'm, I I can I can admit there's a lot of things I don't know. This person even though we look the same, we're not the same. It's just like chickens. How many of you raise chickens? It's all kinds of chickens, all kinds of breeds. They're not the same. They're the same as far as a chicken is concerned, 
but they're not the same. We are not the same. When you have a people in this country for hundreds of years, whatever they was to begin with, they're no longer. Even in your own family, you can see a change. Unless you stay with the same type of person or people with your kind of nose, with your kind of mouth, your same kind of skin color, that's the only way you can be true to yourself. But even if you look at your family, when if you come from a dark-skinned family and your people start mixing with lighter-skinned people, whatever, those children are going to turn out different than y'all. And as generations go forth, they will no longer be of you. It's over. It's gone. Even the religious teachings, when it comes to Islam, they say that the generations that come after Prophet Muhammad are not of him. So all this stuff that y'all see, what they say, the, the, the Kufi, uh, the Sunnis, uh, uh, whatever the, these different factions of, of Islam is, they will not be of Prophet Muhammad. Even though it comes from the same place. We all have our general, general origins, but we're not the same. So we are told that we are of ancient Kemet. What did we do? We've never been outside of America. We added, we, there was no teachings, there's no Nobody that looked like us really looked like us in the hieroglyphics in Egypt. We don't know nothing about that. Nobody in Egypt left us nothing. How can you go all this time and don't have nothing of ancient Egypt if that's where we come from? Those are our people. Now, we have traces of of African culture, but we don't practice nothing from ancient Egypt. Absolutely nothing. And so, with all due respect, we have our teachers, like our brother Sarah Sudan Seti. His whole agenda now is just teaching ancient Egypt. You teaching something and you have no connection to it. What you're teaching is speculation. You assume. Because you never lived that and you don't know nobody lived that. Nobody told you nothing. And you take that as your own. You don't know nothing about that. That's why you are debating and arguing about that all day long because none of you live in ancient Egypt at no time. Your mother didn't, your great-great-grandfather didn't. You can keep going back. You never, we never lived in ancient Egypt. We don't have nothing to do with that. But it's a wonderful thing to understand and know that melanated people had high civilization. There's nothing wrong with that. So you can tell these races you're a damn lie. Melanated people did this. Black people did that which they already know. They don't want us to know, but that's we didn't have nothing to do with that. My argument this evening is how are we going to put, which there's nothing wrong with, with learning Kemi. There's nothing wrong with Maya. You don't never hear me say that there's something wrong with it like that. But everything has to be put in its proper place. We're not children no more. We are adults. You don't have to, you don't have to kiss my little knee because I fall down. You don't have to keep skinning and grinning and smiling in my face. I don't need feel-good teachers no more. 
truth hurts, but I can handle the truth. But it's better to, to know the truth in the long run than continue these lies. And it's a lie that we came from ancient Egypt. And we do ourselves a disservice when we put Egypt on a pedestal, a place where we never lived over what we know. And you put down your own forefathers. So I'm looking at YouTube videos. Cause I don't like the, I don't like I'm honest. I don't like, I don't care about reading no more. So I watch the videos. I listen. And if it's interesting, I will go find some books to get more in depth, but I will, I will go to the YouTube video, the Instagram video to get started. And many of these people that put these videos together do a damn good job. There's many things I did not know that the so-called Negro did here in America. Some of us, we laugh at Black History Month. And some of you talk about, I'm black 365 days a year. But when I hear you talk, I don't hear you talk black history. I hear you talk about your ancient Ethiopia, Timbuktu, uh, Kemet, or whatever. What about your history? So you think that we sat here in America, even though our ancestors were slaves, they didn't accomplish a damn thing worthy of talking about because they were slaves. Yet you know many of the inventions, many of the things that we use every day came from black slaves. You know that they, the slave master stole, the slave master stole many of the inventions of our ancestors and took it for their own. I heard that the, uh, the cotton gin, a slave developed that, not Eli Whitney. See, I know on my job, I understand what it, how that's possible because I know on my job, I was always looking to try to find some way to, to make things easier on me. So I would look at what I, I need to do and find a better way to get the job done. So why wouldn't a slave do that? Even though he's uneducated, he's looking at the situation. You, you have a brain and you're looking at the situation. There's got to be a better way than this. You know, we already doing Backbreaking labor, but it has to be a better way to do things. You don't have nothing else to do except sit there and look in your misery and look and see a better way. And then Masa noticed, hey, what you what you doing there, boy? You gotta be scared. You just gotta be scared because you're doing things outside of what Masa wants you to do. Well, sir. Uh, we doing it this way, but I found out, sir, if you do it that way, we can get things done quicker, sir. Blah, you, you. you was a smart boy. Show the other slaves how to do that. Because in business, it's about production. The easier you can get the job done, the more money I can make. Go ahead, boy. Teach the other slaves how to do it that way. Black History Month. I don't hear y'all talking about all the things. It's it's so many things. There's some basic black history things that they talk about during Black History Month and black history in general. Y'all don't go into depth. You don't go into depth about our history the way you're doing. I mean, you listen to somebody like Sara Sunseti and a lot of these people into Kemet. Look how in depth, I mean, they really dig. They really dig into that history. Here you are. Here we are. We sit on almost 500 years of history. Our own. And we don't dig. And you'd be amazed the things that we've been able to accomplish in this country. We've done things 
the Egyptians didn't do. You can say they assumed, but they didn't do. There's a lot of things that we do. Just take a look at the basic thing. Egypt didn't have that. Egypt was still running around with camels or horses or whatever. We were messing with, with machines. We did, we was part of the industrial age and still doing it. Teach them that, teach that to your children. How you gonna get hyped up on what somebody else did? You didn't have so see our children can say, my great grandfather is was part of that. My mama lived during that time. We have nothing to do with ancient Egypt. We have no contribution, we have no connection. The CC, I call it the CC. There is no connection to ancient Egypt. There is no contribution to that history. That's why honest Africans would tell you, you're not an African. Because the connection is speculation because you never lived in Africa. That's your first problem. You have no contribution to that history, none. Honest Africans will tell you, I like your brother, your nice brother. We are brothers because we are black, but you're not African. You was not born here. So when you go to Africa, they don't teach their people about some long lost relatives in America because we're not them. We, we some some of us might look like them because I know there's places where I can go and people from the continent, my brother, they mean African brother. No, uh, <laughs> no. Some of us might look that way. But as a people, what Africans do we look like? What Egyptians do as a people? I'm not talking about individuals. They always go get one or two people. No, as a people, what Africans, what Egyptians are we supposed to look like? What Egyptian Sarah Sun said is supposed to look like? You're not an African. The so-called Negro in America, we have different shades of skin color, different physical features. We have kinky hair. We have semi-straight hair. We have big noses, thin noses, big lips, thin lips, fat skinny. There is no, you cannot take one female and one male from the so-called black American and say, this is what black Americans look like. Cause you don't, you can even look at your family. Look how different all of you look. You can't judge me on my family. Because everybody looks a lot different. You wouldn't even know we're related. But we, we should not, we should not need. I'm not saying we sh we don't we we shouldn't learn. There's nothing wrong with knowledge. There's nothing wrong with learning ancient history. But how you how you gonna put history that you don't have nothing to do with? over history that you live and you are part of every day. I don't get it. Because you don't have no love for yourself. Because you really don't know yourself. You don't even, you don't know black history. And I just noticed in the book, what I do with that, my book? Oh, there it is. Now, even though they are saying that we Egyptian is not, they don't really go into depth about it. They can't go into depth about it because we wasn't there. That's why they can't go into depth about it. We wasn't in Egypt. Then the rest 
of the volume of the encyclopedias is black history from slavery till 1974, whatever that was, these books came out. And you have no pride. So they they mock Tariq Nasheed, they mock brothers and sisters that just want to be and they embrace their own self being here in America because that's who we are, that's all we know. Anything outside of that is not, that's not you. That's a fabrication, that's not real. And I can guarantee you, our accomplishments can match Egypt because Egypt don't have what we are. We are in the modern industrial age. And people are always creating something new. Our plumbing is better than ancient Egypt. They didn't have the kind of plumbing that we have. What is, what is high civilization? What does that mean? How, how is it high civilization and you have kings and queens committing incest? Because that's what they practice. In high civilization, royal people, mamas lay down with their sons, kings lay down with the daughters, they practice incest. You want to be part of that. I'm a king. You, you, want to, you want to go to bed with your daughter, with your son, because that's what they practice. And they were tyrants. I noticed these people that teach Kemet, they ignore that Egypt also was tyrannical. Warmongers. They skipped that part. They just want to give you this holier than thou. They were not holier than thou. They were just like you. A church on every corner, synagogue, mosque, temple, and y'all violent and profane and nasty as hell. They were the same way. They, oh, let's practice what is the 42 principles of my yacht. Then they'll beat the hell out of you in the middle of the street. They was doing the same stuff. They was not holy and righteous. This, this pain and this false picture. They had a class system. All the mummies that you find is the rich. If you was poor, you couldn't afford to be mummified. It was a class system. If you was poor, you didn't have no money. If you was a female, unless you was the queen, you were subject. You had to, these brothers love submission. You had to submit to your man, get your ass whooped. Woman, know your place. Even male children had authority over women. We saw that in Roots. But Kuta Kente's grandma didn't go for it. I'll kick your ass, boy. But in these societies, that's how that's how things run. Men, you got to serve me. I'm the man. And you want to embrace all the, these things. That's why you're sick as hell. And you're confused as hell. You should want to be different. This is why I embrace my history, what I know as a black American, because you are in a position to start all over from scratch and learn from what they done wrong and be better than them. Why you want to be them? You can be better than them. Whatever history you embrace from Africa, if you want to be a Muslim, you got to take the bad with the good. So if they, if they committed murder, some kind of atrocity, whatever evil thing they done, you accept that too. You part of it. I don't want I don't want to be part of nobody else's sins. You are in a position, start from scratch. No blood is on your hands. 
But if you are part of these other people, because none of these suckers are holy and righteous, nowhere. You embrace their history, you also are embracing the skeletons they have in their closet or what we know that they've done. We always talk about the white man. The white man done this, the white man done that. There are melanated people, there are black people that will call other black people the devil. I guarantee you right now, there's a reason why Africans running to the United States. Because some black devils chased them out of Africa, the whole continent. They show you how bad Africa is. I can't go from Northern Africa to Southern Africa or East to West. I got to get the hell off the continent. That's really bad. When you got to leave the whole continent like these people coming by the thousands from South America. They can't go north, they can't go west, they got to go off. They got to get the hell all the way off their continent. Where you at? And you talk about going where they just come from. You don't understand how good you have it. You don't really understand. They always talk about self-hatred. What self are you talking about? This imaginary Egyptian, I'm some kind of Muslim from the tribe of Shabazz, 76 trillion. What, 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 what self hate you talking about? I hate that we had to be lied to. But that's the that's the process of thing. We do that with children as they grow up. Because you don't mean to lie. What you're trying to do is encourage your child to be better, to have to have self-esteem. Go ahead, little Johnny. You can catch the ball. Little Johnny ain't gonna never catch that ball. It's called encouragement. Trying to build self-esteem. We needed that. And you got it. But it's not you. The self-hate is you don't think that your history or you are just as good as anybody else. So you want to be other folks. They better than you. Their food better than you. Their diet is better than yours. Everything about them is better. I want to go back to ancient Egypt. There I get you. You want to go back to riding a damn camel, a mule, whatever the hell they was doing. That's over with. You always want to go back. When a baby is born, the mother pushes forward. The mama don't push backwards. You got to get out. You got to go into the future. You got to go forward. We spend more time in our car going forward than backwards. It's always about going forward. The so-called nigger in America, you so messed up, they got you going backwards 5,000 damn years. What the hell wrong with you? You shouldn't even be going back a hundred years. You're supposed to be marching forward. The reason why you stuck like that is because you're not accomplishing nothing during your time. And what we are accomplishing, we don't know nothing about it. We're not trying to know nothing about it. And don't want to know nothing about it. It's brothers and sisters among us that are accomplishing great things right now. We don't know nothing about it. I know I didn't. They talk about a lot of that stuff on Instagram. You don't have to go back 50 years. You don't have to go back 5,000 years. It's, it's brothers and sisters using their brain and developing things right now. We should be getting the credit. The credit is going, of course, to the white man and some other sucker. We don't even want to embrace our own greatness. So if we don't embrace our greatness, there's a whole lot of folks that don't mind doing it and they, they get powerfully rich off of us. See what I'm saying? We got a brother or a sister, I don't know, lunch break. They stuck on the teachings of Elijah Muhammad from 1930. We are stuck because we don't 
followed the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Malcolm X followed the teachings of Elijah Muhammad and they gave him a bullet. Explain that to us. My people followed the teachings of Elijah Muhammad since the 1970s. They have nothing. You have nothing. It's just talk. We satisfied with talking, feel good rhetoric, church. I'm not, I'm not church. I'm not impressed by that. I've done that for years. Those teachers, all that stuff don't impress me. I want substance like a baby. Once a baby begin to grow, that baby don't want milk no more. You have to give me something better. I can't, you have to give me some solid. You're not growing. You still want Similac. Not even real milk. You want Similac. You don't even want cow's milk. You want Similac. You don't want the black woman's breast because you don't like black women. She's a B. She's a H. You don't even like your women. But oh, Lordy, Lordy, I love Egypt. Lordy, Lordy. I love Africa, but don't love the black woman in America. You don't love yourself. You tell me why God can't come to us. We always got to follow somebody. That's acceptable because you, you have a slave mind. You're always talking how you are God and how great you are. And all that you do is follow. Nobody's following you. You always following somebody. You explain that to me. You have the nerve to make mockery of black Christians, the nation of Islam, and some of y'all blackity black folks. Look who you follow. Dead ass Egyptian that you don't know nothing about. The nation of Islam have their white man. Some supposed to be some kind of biracial. But anyway, he's not you. He's a foreigner. And you follow him and you call him Masa. Who the hell are you to try to make mock of anybody? I will stand with my own. The black America. Soul brothers and sisters in this country. The foundation of black America. There's nothing wrong with us. There's nothing wrong with us. I don't need these people's gods. God can come to me personally. Don't tell me about your God that you got from a foreigner. I don't need the Bible and Quran. God, you come and talk to me personally. I've suffered enough. I've earned it. You come and talk to me personally. Stop sending me these people's hand-me-downs. What make them so special? And they crooked. All of them rebels against God. So why should I listen to them? How can they be a representative of God? These crooked-ass violent people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, accept your own and be yourself. A Muslim. No, accept your own and be who we are for 500 years in this country. That's who we really are. And start loving yourself. So this means you don't love your mother. Your father, our ancestors, that, that's all we know. We don't know nothing about nobody. We don't know nothing about nobody from 76 trillion years ago, 5,000 years ago, 50,000. We don't know nothing about that stuff. How you going to love them but don't love the people that you were born from right here in this country?
What is it they say in the scriptures? How can you love God? How can you, how can you love Jesus? But don't love your brother that you see every day. You don't have no love for Angel Snuff Nup Seven. You don't have no love for black American people in this country. But you're gonna foam at the mouth for Egyptians and, and these African, these folks you don't even know. They wouldn't give you a slice of damn bread. How can you, how can you love God but hate your brother that you see every day? Kemet is not our history. And like I say, anybody that want to come here and show me any of these histories is us. You can show us the CC. You can show the connection and the, and the contribution to that history. We'll listen to you. You're not going to get that off. And you know it, that's why they won't, that's why they won't come here. You ain't gonna get that off. That's some feel-good nonsense. The supreme wisdom is proven to be true facts every day. You have supreme wisdom and ain't done a damn thing supreme. Bring it, talk to me. You ain't done nothing supreme. You have supreme wisdom, ain't done nothing supreme. What have you done out of the ordinary that nobody else has done? And you're supposed to have supreme wisdom. You ain't done nothing. This feel good stuff, I can't do it no more. If I tell you I have supreme wisdom, I will show you. Here's my building. Here's my farm. With all these fruits and vegetables, I grow all year long, winter or whatever. It don't make no difference because I solved the problem. My fruits and vegetables can handle the summer, the winter. I'm going to show you my supreme wisdom. i show you my car because I have supreme wisdom. You don't have nothing except talk. We should be sick of that. Again, we're going to get out of here. We're going to get out of here. I have love for us. And if you have a problem with me loving us, if you have a problem with Tariq Nasheed, Yvette Carnell, Tone Tokes, all of us who love us, that's your damn problem. You the one sick. You the one sick, don't love yourself. Because you the one that don't know yourself. There's nothing wrong with being who we are. I've been talking on YouTube since 2007. And my talk don't come from a foreigner. It don't come from the Bible. It don't come from the Quran. It don't come from some special divine person. I'm come. It come from me. Because I have lived 60 damn years. You've been living all this time and don't have, have nothing to, to, to add to life. The only thing you are is a parrot, a copycat. You have no value in yourself. That's not living, being a robot, being somebody zombie. I learned how to love myself and think for myself. So these thoughts and these conclusions come from me. It ain't coming from nobody's teaching. I don't need nobody to teach me a damn thing. That was nice that you helped me get started when I was a child. I'm a grown man now. I'm an adult with my own mind. And just like some of y'all, you love your parents, but some of you, you know, some of your parents, they, they out of date. You got to leave them behind. Has nothing to do with being disrespectful. Has nothing to do with, with hating nobody. Mama, daddy, I'm grown. You're on your own. 
It's very few people you can go to their house and they run their house the same way they live with mommy and daddy. This is my house. That's why you need the teachers because you're in somebody else's house. I don't need the teachers. I don't need that damn rules because this is my house. You're in somebody else's house. And what's in their house is out of date. You ever go to some of these older people's house? They still have, well, I, I'm guilty of it too, but that's because the stuff still work. But I love technology. I love all this new stuff. But you can go to some of these older people's house, they still got stuff from the 1980s, 1990s or whatever. They holding on, they still got a rotary phone, all this. That's what you are, stuck in the past, 1930. You still dialing a rotary phone. You still want to ride a camel. That stuff is out of date. That was for that was for people that came off the slave plantation. We're not slaves off the slave plantation. We're highly educated. Our only problem is we won't think for ourselves. That's our problem. Thinking for self. That's our problem. We want somebody else to do our thinking. I got somebody in my chat room, somebody dead doing his thinking for him. And you can keep doing that. Stay in the grave. I'm not about that. Trying to follow dead people. Listening to people that's not even related to you. You ain't related to nobody in the Bible. You ain't related to nobody in, in the Quran. Nobody. And you form it at the mouth. I can't do it. You want to keep doing that? Then keep doing that. Just parody. He taught us supreme mathematics. What, did, what have you built with your supreme mathematics? They ain't done nothing. You talk about supreme mathematics. What have you built with your supreme mathematics? I know my mathematics is, it is poor. And you ain't gonna see nothing from me. People with supreme mathematics, they have built some great things. You don't even know how your computer works. How you gonna have supreme mathematics? You don't even know how your computer works. You don't know how your phone works. But you have supreme mathematics. Dumb stuff. I can't do it no more. I'm sorry. I can't do it no more, y'all. I can't do it no more. Again, I could be in error. Again, I could not. I probably came to the wrong conclusion. If I have, come here. Talk to us. I'll sit back in the cut. Let you teach us. I'll let you teach me. But you better be ready for some serious interrogation. You better know your stuff. Because if you don't know your stuff, your feelings going to get hurt. And you're going to blame me. No, I didn't tell you to come here like that. You know you didn't know what the hell you were talking about before you came here. <laughs> now we know you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm Angel Snub No. 7. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Thank you, Lunch Break Chronicles. Thank you, Twin Pyramid. Thank you, uh, Brother Yanga. Uh, for joining us for these few minutes. I said I wasn't going to run over an hour, 45 minutes an hour, and I'm going to stick to that. And uh, uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, or I might, maybe the weekend, we have a uh, video live stream. We want to talk about the N-word. And see, that's, that's, that's what our real problem is, the N-word. Dealing with that N-word in us. I want to talk about that. So um, maybe tomorrow night or the weekend, we want to, we want to deal with that uh, topic. So, uh, Waleka Salaam, Lunch Break Chronicles. Shout out to our chat room. Shout out to those out in, out into, uh, out in YouTube universe. Shout out to our, I don't know why, Facebook. 
Facebook, please forgive me. I concentrate on YouTube so much. Please forgive me. Shout out to our Facebook listeners. Angel Snubbed Up 7 YouTube channel. Thank you so much. It's always an honor that you would allow me to have a few minutes of your time. And as long as there's breath in this little bitty body, this soul train, it moves on. With or without you, it don't make no difference. I'll get be on the train by myself. It don't make no difference. The train still got a choo 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 choo. Folks got to hear. Folks got to hear an alternative. They got to hear it. Whether you do anything, that's up to you. But you need to hear this alternative. And that's my self-appointed, not God. That's my self-appointed mission to bring us what we call the real truth. So on that note, maybe see y'all tomorrow or the weekend. Oh, well, we got a question. Here. Let me answer this question real quick. <clears throat> Welcome to the reality tip on earth, Laura. That's a new face I haven't seen. Uh, Laura has a question for us. Hey, Reality Temple. Did you believe Michael Jackson was self-hatred? Well, this is my opinion. Some of it, I guess, some of it, Laura, I guess you could say it was self-hatred. Michael had a lot of demons because as you know, Michael said that he was abused by his father. And Michael had a problem looking like his father. So it remind me of myself. Except I, I would never do plastic surgery. I really don't like my father. But when I look in the mirror, I look just like that man. And some women, because you look like the father, and she don't like the father, some of our mothers take it out on, on us because we look like that person that they don't like no more. <laughs> so Michael, he said it himself. He didn't like looking like Joe Jackson. And when he discovered plastic surgery, that was the answer to his problem. But then he began to take it, he began to cross the line. He, be, he became this person that don't even look human no more. Some folks were saying, Michael Jackson look like a white man. Caucasian people, white folks were saying, don't put that on us, we don't look like that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't look like, we're white, we don't look like that. Unless we got some plastic surgery too, we don't look like that. There are beautiful people that mutilate themselves because they don't like what they they don't like who they are. So Michael, because he has the money, kept playing with the plastic surgery. I gotta fix this, I gotta fix that, and messing around. And he became inhuman. Now, as far as Loving black folks, uh, Michael got caught up, and many of our entertainers, they caught up in, in Hollywood. So they're around a lot of white folks, and they understand that Caucasian people run all this. So they get caught up, they get caught up in, in the madness. That's our fault because we have nothing to offer. So they get caught up in that world. But Michael went to Africa and I remember when Michael was in his 20s, he used to talk African, that African black stuff all the time and Michael's, before Thriller, Michael's a more humble type person. Uh, see, I think that Thriller went to his head also. Because I followed Michael Jackson 
ever since Off the Wall, 1979. And then I started collecting Jackson 5 uh, magazines and things like that. I tried to learn everything I could about the Jackson. And before Thriller, Michael was a very, very humble type person. But I noticed he changed after Thriller. See, we get caught up, we get caught up in fame, fortune, and praise, even some of our leaders. When we get money and booty and all this praise, it goes to our head. And it corrupts the person. They probably started off a certain way, but when you get this money and this praise and folks, you you act you it changes people. It changes people. I would hope that something like that would never happen to me. It probably wouldn't because I've never been a materialistic person. I don't care about big houses. I've never, I don't care about big houses and cars and all this type of stuff. I don't care about this. I never have. The happiest time I ever had in my life when I was a little boy, poor, running around in Mississippi. That was the happiest time I ever had in my life. I felt free. I felt free until I start learning about Jim Crow, the racism, and people, how people hate each other, and you selfish, and how violent folks is, messed up my heaven on earth. Because I was living heaven for the concern. But I can't, I can't judge Michael. I don't know what happened. I see the results. I can only talk about what I see. And it don't seem like it was very good. So I would say it's a combination of many, many things. I mean, apparently, we as a people, we don't, we suffer from self-hatred. Even the ones that talk all that stuff. Oh, you for uh, self, who do you love? The same person that tell me, oh, you full of self-hatred. They would turn around and call you a sambo and a cool and the most hateful thing on the planet. Then they would tell you, when you see a black man, you see God. But look how they treated Malcolm X. Look how we treat each other. See, we talk one thing and do something else. What, what, do, what, what do a person do so damn bad, we want him dead? like that people gonna talk about you all your life we gonna go to our grave even after you're dead somebody gonna be talking about you so what but that's because we're violent anyway because there's nothing but talk we're not peace lovers we're not holy and righteous see emotion brings the real us out and we can see exactly who we are. When we get upset and angry, the real them comes out. So I really don't like, I really don't mind getting some folks angry because I want to see who you are for real. And there we go. Thanks for your question, Laura. I hope that you come back and visit us maybe tomorrow or maybe the weekend we want to talk about the n-word we want to talk about this demon inside of us that's part of black history how did we become the n-word and why is it acceptable and why do we embrace it this nasty thing inside of us. We want to talk about that. Again, thank you, Laura, for your question.
Thank you so much uh, for listening to us this afternoon. I'm 10 minutes over, but I had a question from our, our sister Laura. I wanted to uh, answer that. Give my little opinion. My opinion don't mean nothing. So what? Uh, I hope that uh, I answered your question. It's just my opinion. I don't know. I, I, I don't know Michael Jackson. I never had a chance to talk to him. I really don't know. I can just it's just speculation, I, I'm, I guess. I have my own problems. <laughs> I have my own problems, Laura. Got to try to figure that out. Before you judge somebody else, what about you? We walk around here, we're going to talk about that on, that on that topic. The N-word. Being, being an N-word. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments, all that kind of good stuff. I'm Angel Snump Number 7. And as our brother Duncan Nealis used to always say as in party, we wish you love, peace, and soul. We are Audi 5000.